among us and by cutting all of our investments for everyone else. They believe that's how we build a tomorrow. In effect, their vision says, I got mine, the rest of you are on your own. I don't believe that. I believe that we are better than that. I believe that the way we create a future is that we invest in that future. We have done it in the past, and we have turned away from it, and we need to do it again. We need to make those investments in education again. You know, you think about it, from the Great Depression for the next 50 years, we invested, invested, invested in education, from Project Head Start to community colleges, public universities. We made those investments. We did it on the idea that if our children are better educated, they'll have more opportunities. We invested in infrastructure, in roads and bridges and water and power and sewage. Why? We didn't know what the next great business was going to be. We didn't know who was going to start it. But what we did know, you were probably going to need to plug in. You were going to need to get your goods to market. You were going to need for workers to be able to come to you. So all of us invested in creating those conditions so that businesses could flourish and grow opportunity for all of us. It was an investment for all of us. And we invested in research, in science, in medicine. We invested in building a big pipeline of ideas on the notion that we didn't know what would be invented or what would be cured, but we would make those investments together to build a big pipeline of ideas and it would create more opportunities for all of us. And it worked. You look at the numbers year over year, America's GDP keeps growing up for 50 years after the Great Depression, and so does America's median family income. Our country got richer, our families got richer, our families got richer, our country got richer. We turned away from that, and it has hurt us. Mm. And now we live in a world in which China is investing 9% of its GDP in infrastructure. Europe is investing 5% of its GDP in infrastructure. Here in the U.S., we're at 2.4% and trying to figure out how to cut it. That's not building the future. That's not even maintaining the present. We live in a world in which over the last 40 years, We've cut our investment as a proportion of GDP in basic research by more than half, shrinking that pipeline of ideas. And education, I can pick from a lot of places, but I'll stick with public universities. <laughs> a young person today who wants to go to a public university, and the cheapest way possible, live at home, borrow the books, but you've got to pay tuition and fees, that young person will pay 300 adjusted for inflation, 350% of what her mom and dad would have paid just 30 years ago. That's not the way we build a future. So the way I see this is that's what this race is about. How do you think we build a future? What does it mean to be a people who invest in the future? I see this race as a race ultimately about credibility. Let's talk about credibility for just one minute. Scott Brown says he supports women, and then he turns around and votes to limit access to birth control and votes against equal pay for equal work. That's a problem. Scott Brown says that he supports Wall Street reform and then turns around and negotiates secretly to try to weaken those reforms. That's not going to work. And Scott Brown says he wants jobs, 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 jobs. And yet, three jobs bills in a row last fall. One that would have supported 22,000 jobs here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. One that would have prevented the layoffs of teachers, firefighters, and police officers all across the Commonwealth. And one that would have put 11,000 people to work it, principally in construction and transportation, repairing our roads and bridges. He voted no, he voted no, he voted no. Scott Brown has no credibility. Yeah. So let's just be clear about this.
about whose side you stand on. Not what words you give, not what nice ads you run. It's going to be whose side you really stand on. Do you believe in a world that says, I got mine, the rest of you are on your own? No. 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 Do you believe in a world that says, you get to say nice things about women, about jobs, about your strong on Wall Street reform, and then go out and vote exa and work exactly the opposite way? No. 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 Or are we a world that believes we can do this? We can do this together. It's up to us to make the decision. It's up to us to make the investment starting now to build a future, to invest in ourselves, to invest in our kids, to invest in our kids' kids. I think that's what this election is going to be about. We're going to have to decide what kind of a people we are and what kind of a country we're trying to build. Absolutely. I'm going to say one last thing and then I'm going to quit. <laughs> this is hard, running for public office. Never thought I'd do this, but I want to say this. I'm talking about what I've been talking about for 25 years. What's happening to the people who keep getting the short end of the stick? I've been out there fighting on their behalf for 25 years, and for 25 years, I've watched it get worse and get worse and get worse. So for me, what this race is about is just stepping up that fight. Only the difference now is I'm not doing this alone. I'm not doing this with a small group of people. I'm doing this with all of you. And when I do it with all of you, I know we're going to make the difference. Woo! All right.